What's going on everybody? Thanks so much for joining me here today. My name is Jeremy. I'm a motion graphics designer, animator, and 3D hobbyist. This show is an unrehearsed screen recording of my workflow and a peek into my journey to develop a deeper design skill set. Here it's not so much practice makes perfect, but more practice makes progress. This is The Drill. So this week I, I actually found a, a Instagram post from AMR Render that will be linked in the show notes down below. Um, and that uh, render I think looked awesome. It was like a it was a clock. Um, it looked like it was almost like in an abandoned building with like this foggy material. So I thought this would be a good exercise to play around with some you know basic designing in Illustrator to build out a material and then bring that into Octane and then just be a good exercise to uh, do some light modeling. Uh, I want to get into a little bit more organic modeling um, and just really start to model and sculpt in Cinema 4D a lot more. So I thought this is a nice little way to dip my toes in. Um, you know, it's a hard surface model type of uh, type of project. So I thought this would be kind of fun. Ultimately, you'll see when I get to the second uh, big hand and little hand, um, I kind of just sped through that and just made some um, cubes and just kind of put a pin through it. But either way, this was like a, it was a fun project to, to just, you know, the, I wasn't doing any like macro shots or anything like that. So I thought it'd be a fun way to model that and, and see what I could do from there. So uh, I was just an illustrator just building out um, a clock face um, um, and I saved that out to a specific um, to square dimensions so that when I brought it into Octane I could project that onto my disc um, and so I would have the clock face fit flat right on that so in modeling this I just used uh, a disc uh, I, I'm sorry I actually used a cylinder um, that way it had a little depth to it put a little bevel on it um, when you're modeling in in uh, especially modeling a real world type object um, everything in the real world has some sort of um, unrefined edge or, or you know everything has like a bevel on it so you can't have these like perfect um, 90 degree angles or else it just looks weird um, also uh, when we get to the glass and the material for that you'll see that um, I tried to uh, distress that as well so it didn't look so clean and perfect um, but anyway, here here is the the clock face. So what we're doing here is projecting this uh, material. I'm just piping it right into the diffuse channel. Um, so it's just a JPEG piped right into the diffuse channel, and then I played with the transform properties on that until I got it. Um, I, I had to turn off the tiling so that I didn't get the repeated edge. And then I got it there. Now is it was really just like playing around with different materials, and um, I think for a while here I was just doing a lot with materials. So. Uh, Right here I have my clock against a wall um, and what I was going to use is um, this like abandoned kind of look that uh, AMR renders uh, render had. Um, so it was just like kind of tweaking and playing with that. At first I set up um, a brick wall material and that was like straight out of polygon. Um, so right here I'm just kind of plugging everything into there. Um, this is actually the, um, the metal material for like the base of the clock or the, the casing of the clock. Um, and this was uh, what was cool about this exercise was like I, I don't do a lot of projected materials I just kind of like apply it to the UV mesh so um, this was like a nice little exercise because that material was getting like stretched around in a radial way and I didn't want that to happen so it was uh, fun to get in and kind of troubleshoot uh, the issue I was having and then use the, uh, the information that I've been building just from doing these to, to kind of figure out uh, how I would fix that problem. So anyway, uh, after that I got a concrete uh, type material and just to start to art direct the lighting a little bit. You could see that uh, live viewer window which is helpful to see how many samples that the render is going to need in, in certain spots. So I didn't want to have a material that was uh, too crazy because it, you know these are quicker renders for the drill so I, I don't want to be sitting here forever. Um, I um, I'll mention it at the end, but I, I, I did go through and do just like a one frame render of this clock just to see um, what that would look like if I really pushed the samples uh, high up there. Um, but because I was trying to do this quickly, um, that, that little uh, live viewer window is really helpful to see what kind of um, uh, render time you're, you're 
facing um, just based on how many samples um, it's going through with the adaptive sampling. So um, at this stage, I was just, uh, I, I didn't like the lighting on this. I just threw an HDRI on there and was playing around with it. I started to art direct it a little with um, uh, um, an octane light uh, area light but um, uh, ultimately uh, I'll go with that but I just wasn't I was trying to replicate and and um, reverse engineer this render so I was trying to trying to kind of dial in the lighting at first I, I switched my um, camera around to see if maybe I could frame it up in a different way but here we are just framing up this shot um, playing around with um, the materials again on that back wall, and I think this was getting a lot closer to where I wanted to go. I played around with the um, the camera in Octane just to see um, what kind of uh, background, or uh, excuse me, what kind of like um, color scheme I could get on the on the image. I ultimately used the sRGB uh, rather than tweaking everything um, because I do take it into After Effects and play around with it there. Um, and then here, obviously, we need our um, our clock to tick. So I'm. Um, this was another uh, fun uh, exercise in this project because um, I'm very used to animating in After Effects, and I'm just starting to get into animating in Cinema 4D. So playing around with the the uh, dope sheets and adjusting the curves and everything, I. Um, discovered different ways to animate in this project that I didn't know before this so it's it's you know that's what the drills all about it's just like finding these like little tools and tricks and stuff like that that really helps to bring it to the next to you know bring the whole game to the next level and then hopefully um, and that's my game because I know there's like tons of people out there that are way better than me at this so um, and then hopefully there are little nuggets in there that you could take and bring to you know your personal work and your professional work so um, I slowed down my uh, time lapse this week uh, because I wanted to talk about the actual com uh, compositing a little bit more because I kind of usually just blow through it I tend to follow the same pattern um, and that's partially for repetition but you know I also do want to uh, be able to talk about it so what I'm doing here is I throw on uh, an unsharp mask which is just a very slight Gaussian, Gaussian blur and then an unsharp mask um, and it, it just gives um, just this like a uh, little bit more of a, ref a refined sharp edge to the render um, I'm also putting on a vignette which you can tell um, I like to use uh, lens flare and really back it up a lot but but you could see the lens flare in the upper right hand corner um, almost off the two basically from one to three o'clock up up into the right you could kind of see where that lens flare is um, just to kind of give it a little bit more photorealism um, I also like to use optics compensation uh, that's optics compensation and I reverse the um, lens distortion and it what it does is it gives like a little bit of rounding at the edge of the image um, to try to just you know give it a little bit more of that hand it's not handmade but that that analog feel that it wasn't just like digitally produced um, on top of that it's you know everything else is just curves um, levels and and color adjustments I think for this uh, render I even threw uh, a LUT on top of it um, and uh, that gave us that like greenish look and I just brought it down a little bit but I mean it's a pretty simple render it's just a clock ticking away you know I got a little uh, light bulb flicker in there which is just passing um, my light channel uh, to screen I send out my um, octane area light as a light ID 2 and then I just uh, render that out as well screen it over and then I repeat um, a transparency or uh, an opacity flicker on and off and that's about it for this render. Um, I actually went back through and uh, played with the specular material a little bit uh, and was able to get uh, uh, much closer to the foggy glass material that I was going for. Um, and then I cranked up the sample sizes uh, because I was just rendering out one frame. So the new render took an hour. So if I was gonna do that for an animation that's uh, you know, 180 hours just to get this short little animation. So that's something to keep in mind if you're gonna crank up your sample sizes for production. Um, but that's that's it. It really just takes a lot of tweaking and playing around until you can really 
uh, dial in the look you're going for. So that's all for this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. You know how YouTube works. You could like, share, subscribe, comment down below. You could follow me on Instagram and Twitch at Jeremy underscore Walker. That's J-R-M-Y underscore W-L-K-R. You could shoot me an email or reach me at my website. Next week, we're going to be playing around with claymation and uh, trying to find a way to do uh, to replicate a claymation style animation with low FPS and the materials that we're going to make in Octane. So I'm really excited for that one, and I really hope to see you guys all next week on the drill.